Hey guys, my name is Ryan Central, and welcome to some brand new, never before seen gameplay of Borderlands 3. I will be showing off both Zane and Amara, but in this video we will be just focusing on the Siren. If I sound tired and a bit sore, that's because I am. My throat is kind of killing me at this point, but I'm very excited to be able to show you off uh, one of the new heroes in Borderlands 3 their abilities, what they can do, how they play, and also looking a little bit at the skill tree and how that's basically changed for Borderlands 3, as well as mentioning a few other bits and pieces, I suppose, as we go along. We do have a giveaway going on at the moment. I won't hop on for it too long. Giving away Borderlands 3 ends at the end of this month. Um, it's in the comments, so do check that out if you're interested. To begin with, we should probably start with the abilities, as this is quite a new sort of thing for Borderlands 3, which I actually quite like a lot. You still have the three talent trees, which is the same as other Borderlands Borderlands games, you have three talent trees that focus in different areas for each of the characters, but for Amara it's broken down into the Brawl section, Mystical Assault Tree, and also Fist of the Elements. But each of these talent tree focuses on one ability. For Amara you can only have one of the three abilities I'm about to mention equipped, and these abilities are as followed. You have Face Slam, which I'm showing on screen, you jump in the air, you slam the ground, you deal damage to those nearby, but you also knock them up in the air. The second ability is Phase Cast, which is when you send forward an Astral Projection, uh, which deals damage, it can travel through stuff like cover, hit multiple targets, and also the final ability is the Phase Grasp ability, which basically is Maya from Borderlands 2. You grab them, you lock them into place, and you can do quite a bit of damage there. But this is where it gets really interesting. So basically, as a Mara, you pick one of the three abilities that I just mentioned, but then you can also have an additional thing called an Augment. And what this does is it adds a unique effect to that ability, such as, say for example, in a gameplay in the background, I'm using Phase Cast, which is the Astral Projection, but I'm also using the Augment Soul Sap, which basically all of the damage I do a portion of that damage comes back to me as health, which is really cool for keeping yourself alive. So you see myself getting healed from some of the abilities I'm using in the background. Uh, other examples of augment abilities would be in this tray, at least for stillness of mind, where enemies damaged by the action skill become phase locked in place until they're damaged or the duration ends, but it increases the cooldown. One key thing to note about the augment slot for Amara is that she has free augments, but you can't just throw in any augments that you want. They have to fit into the different slots, which are the attack component, the effect component, and the elemental component. And these are shown by the shapes. You have more of the sort of arrow pointing down shape for the effect, uh, the hexagon for the attack component, and then the diamonds for the elemental component. And say, for example, uh, the talent tree that was shown to us in the overlay for the mystical assault there isn't actually any form of elemental component in there, there's no diamond shape, so it's kind of worth bearing in mind. To get the most out of all three uh, augment slots, you're going to have to pick and choose which ones that you could take. I don't know if, for example, you can have the Mystical Assault talent tree with that ability equipped, and then take a elemental component from, let's say, Fist of the Elements. I don't know necessarily if that's good to work or not, but it's certainly worth trying when we get the hands-on. But this is worth bearing in mind for Amara, at least. I don't necessarily know if this is similar to uh, Flak and Moe's, but in comparison to Zane, he just does normal sort of down arrow uh, mod slots. There's no elemental or attack components there, I suppose. So worth bearing in mind and certainly getting your head around for Amara if you plan to play her. I really want to go over the skill tree in more detail some other time when I'm a little less tired, but I basically wanted to show you this gameplay, the free abilities, and a couple of examples of what augment abilities kind of actually are. So what was playing Amara like? Well, she was a lot of fun. I was kind of worried after playing Zane. I played Zane first and he was quite surprising and a lot of fun. But because of that, I was kind of worrying that Amara might not be as good as I was hoping. But she is fairly straightforward. She is a typical sort of siren character, uh, very much melee focused. But I wouldn't necessarily say, and this is something I'm gonna sort of echo in other videos, that there's really a weapon affinity that she has. In previous games, you know, you talk about Roland, you know that he's really good with a combat rifle, SMGs for Lilith, that kind of stuff. It's very much a case of uh, previous Vault Hunters in Borderlands games have had a certain element of, oh yeah, they're really good with a certain weapon. I don't necessarily think that that's really the case for Borderlands 3. It doesn't seem that that's a big focus on what they're trying to do. 
Weapons in this game, by the way, are incredible. I kind of want to talk about it a little bit more, maybe later on in this video, but generally, um, Amara is just good with all sorts of different weapons. It doesn't necessarily feel that she has to focus on one in particular, but I feel that that's more of a design choice than uh, Amara in particular. Her abilities are really strong in terms of how good they are. I think early on, the sort of phase ability that I had to begin with that sends out the astral projection is the best, especially with the augment that I had that brings back some of the health uh, from the damage that I do, which is just good in those instances where you want to keep your health up. I've always been a fan of playing people like Roland in Borderlands 1, where you do damage, you heal yourself, that kind of stuff. Like, I think most important than anything is keeping yourself alive, especially when trying to sort of play on your own solo, trying to level up and just trying to uh, do a lot of difficult content that might be a couple of levels out of your reach. I think survivability is just so much more important than any form of damage that you can do, so this was a really cool one. The other abilities and the augments that they had weren't as interesting, so for me, when leveling up, this is probably the route I would take. Um, with the phase cast ability and the soul sap augment. Phase slam was a really cool ability, but I often felt that because you have to get in so close to fight people that um, you never really got as much use out of it as you wanted. And it doesn't, you know, like one shot anybody in particular, it knocks them up in the air. So I think if you're playing in a group, for example, this might work out quite well to combo them. But I think in this particular case, uh, phase cast just outdoes everything else, I think, when it comes to damage and what it can do. Phase Grab I didn't really use that much just because it's very much a Meyer ability, I kind of know how it works in general. No doubt there's going to be some really cool combos and stuff that you can do. When playing this I really wanted to use the Phase Cast ability, get some health back and it was just a good way of trying to keep myself alive. Um, because of that I, ha I had a lot of fun using it. There was a lot of concern I suppose that Amara would be the, the melee focused character or if you are interested in melee that you know she would be the perfect character for it but like I said it doesn't really feel that there's that affinity there and it's the same for Zayn I'll say it in that video that we'll do where it doesn't necessarily feel like you are playing an assassin character you can build him in a very different way with the abilities that he has and it's very much the same with Amara but in comparison to Zayn out of the two I think Zayn was a lot more interesting because um, A you can equip two different abilities whereas Amara can only equip one but B I guess the abilities that Zayn has require a bit more of a skill check I suppose that you can do some really cool stuff with your clone being able to teleport with it uh, your drone focusing certain targets using a shield to almost be a bit more of a tank whereas Amara has a few abilities that can do some pretty cool stuff but they're not as unique as something that Zane could do or Moe's or Flak in that case but to be honest I can't really compare the two because I haven't played Flak or Moe's uh, but I had a lot of fun playing her and generally was able to blast through the content a lot more than playing Zane so I think she's going to be a good hero to start off with I think if you're new to the sort of game you're going to enjoy a lot and if you like playing previous sirens such as Lilith and Maya I think you are just going to really like playing um, Amara in this case but that's enough about the hero, let's talk a little bit about what we actually did, what we actually played. Um, we got to play the game for like 90 minutes, pretty much no holds barred when it comes to uh, the stuff that we can show off in terms of like gameplay, it was just kind of like, yeah, play this section of the game. And it was a good mix of one main mission, which you're sort of seeing in the background with Zero involved and stuff like that. Um, and also some side missions, which I mostly got to play on um, Zane more than Amara in this case, because there was a couple of interviews that I had to do and stuff. So I didn't get to play as much of Amara as I'd like, but it's a very weird shift in terms of uh, style. It very much still feels like Borderlands, but um, they've doubled down on a few things that I think have made this game a lot more suitable for the current year, I suppose. Like, it feels like Borderlands has tried to catch up in a lot of different areas. The world's been one of them, but it still doesn't feel like it's just tried to be Destiny 2 or anything like that. It very much feels more like Borderlands 3, but it's, like I said, doubled down to certain areas. The first is the world. As you sort of seen, it is like a hub world more than anything. I think Borderlands has always suffered from a go here, go to point A, go to point B go back to point A, go to point C, um, whereas this sort of feels like you've been plopped into the middle of a world, you have side missions around you, you have the main mission that you can do, it generally feels a lot more alive and less of a sort of chase to certain areas that I think Borderlands 1 and 2 did suffer from quite a lot. Uh, because of that, it felt almost more like an MMO, but it didn't feel like a always online kind of game like Destiny or Division or Anthem. It still felt like Borderlands, but just the world felt a lot more alive, which I think was really cool. 
and no doubt something that they did intentionally and tried to put a lot of time and investment into. Uh, the main thing that I think people are going to notice this is weapons. Like we knew a great deal of detail going into it about what weapons do what, but I was really surprised at how established each of the weapons felt. In previous Borderlands game, you knew that you picked up a Maliwan weapon, it would be elementally focused, but you can tell what weapon type a weapon is more now. And this was always something I struggled with personally. It's like, oh, I couldn't really tell the difference between a doll weapon or a Jacobs. If I was playing Borderlands 1 or Borderlands 2, uh, as much as now, you definitely know when you've picked up a Maliwan weapon, you know when you've picked up a doll one, TDR, especially with the running guns, uh, the perks are a lot more established, I suppose. So it's really easy to tell what type of guns are what. And the type of guns that come out, in terms of style, it doesn't feel like any one of them are the same. And we got a good chance to play with all of the different sort of gun brands in the game. And each of them felt very unique, uh, with different play styles that you can run. Um, a good portion of the weapons, such as Maliwan, um, Dahl, and Vladov, you would press the sort of down button on the controller and it would switch style. For example, showing a bit of gameplay using a Maliwan weapon, you can see in the bottom right it's using radiation, whereas if I press down here it would change it to like shock or fire to a different element, which means that you can pick and choose what element you want to use in certain situations, which is really good against, you know, tough enemies that have shields or don't have shields. Um, you have a lot more control and ways to customize your play, which is only a good thing. Um, Vladov weapons are really cool because you tend to go from like a combat rifle, you can change it to like a grenade launcher. It's nice to have that fluidity and flow between using abilities I'd say, and like the action abilities mixed with certain weapon traits, feels really fluid and moves together, it means that you just have some amazing gameplay. Like the gameplay of this game is definitely the strongest that we've seen so far, it comes as no surprise, but it just surprised me how much focus went into this from Gearbox and Borderlands when it came to weapons, abilities, all that stuff. But it was a lot of fun. The only sort of issue that I ran into if I was being a pin in the ass and critiquing it is just ammo reserves were low. But to be honest, like somebody mentioned to me, that is kind of because you're low level. You need to buy the sort of weapon gear slots to increase your magazine size uh, or just the ammo that you can carry. Uh, because we didn't have the opportunity to go to Sanctuary 2, or Sanctuary 3, sorry, uh, where you can buy this stuff. Like in the gameplay that was shown um, by Radley Pitchford at the gameplay event, uh, we never got a chance to go there, therefore we couldn't increase our ammo reserve. So if I was being picky, that was quite annoying, constantly having to run around. We didn't have an awful lot of money too to buy ammo, so it was more of a pain in the ass to use all of the weapons. But to be honest, we were out to try and use as many different weapons as we possibly could anyway. Um, I don't really want to ramble on too much when it comes to sort of the information, but um, I am going to do a follow-up video to this and some other stuff of just questions that were answered from playing, just talking to some of the developers. I definitely feel that this is a game with Endgame in mind. So sort of talking to the developers, it feels like they've set themselves up quite nicely to future stuff, and they are well aware of the scene, the genre, the loot shooter, Endgame is such a big aspect. They didn't give details necessarily, but there was definitely an element of they know what they're doing and they're prepped for it. So I'm really excited to see what they do there, but that was Amara. Um, big focus on the abilities, uh, the skills. She's definitely something that everybody sort of... Ex She's definitely what people should be expecting from her, to be honest. But it is quite nice that she doesn't have that sort of oh, you have to play her as a melee hero, you have to run her with shotguns or whatever. You can basically kind of do what you want, mix your customization in terms of what weapons you want to run, what abilities, what augments. The level of customization for Borderlands is pretty major, and I'm really happy about that. Uh, sorry if this video was a bit rambly, I am also very tired, but I did want to get this gameplay out for you, even if you did just mute this video, uh, that would have been good. Be sure to enter the giveaway if you haven't already. That was Amara. Some really cool stuff to talk about there. If you have any questions about the Vault Hunter, do let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.